I got a real doozy for you today. Just an honest, just a pure, unadulterated crapshoot that could have been easily avoided. But first, you know, we got to set a little bit of the groundwork, a little foundation for you to be able to kind of keep up with the story. So it was October 18th, 1131 a.m., the Lord's time, which is, it, that is Montana time or Mountain Standard time for you laymen. A patch that removed 177 lines was added and quickly merged into the Linux kernel. Now, you're probably saying, okay, well, patches, I mean, these happen all the time in Linux. What was the big deal? What caused the, uh, the, the raucous amount of criticism, the mischief makers? Well, it's the contents of the patch. Naturally. I mean, what else would it actually be? First, a commit message. Remove some entries due to various compliance requirements. They can come back in the future if sufficient documentation is provided. Signed off by Greg KH. Second in charge, Linux. Now, no need to call Scooby-Doo and the Mr. Gang on this one. One quick look at the patch will make it kind of obvious the point of it. A bunch of maintainers are removed and almost all of them have .ru email addresses. After some time, an Uno reverse was thrown and a counter patch presented with a hot commit message starting off with an absolutely no one ever reviewed patch. But it turns out, Big Chief Linus was ready. Okay, lots of Russian trolls out and about. It's entirely clear why the change was done, and it's not getting reverted. And using multiple anonymous accounts to try to grassroot it by Russian troll factories isn't going to change anything. And FYI for the actual innocent bystanders who aren't troll farm accounts. The various compliant requirements are not just a US thing. Oh, so sanctions, and yes. There were sanctions, and not only that, but this kettle, it turns out, has been ready to boil over for some time because in March 2023, a commit was rejected with the following message. We don't feel comfortable accepting patches from or relating to hardware produced by your organization. Please withhold network contributions until further notice. Well, do pray tell. What organization is this? A Pharonix reader pointed out to me today a patch series that was sent out with fixes to the STMMAC network driver. This is a network driver for the Synapsis Ethernet controllers that are used by some Baikal electronics hardware. It appears that the engineer that presented this networking patch actually either worked for or was affiliated with a Baikal, with whom's parent company has been sanctioned by the U.S. for a significant amount of time, and it turns out Baikal recently made an appearance on this same sanction list. September 15th, 2022, the Office of Foreign Asset Control updated their specifically designated nationals and blocked persons list to include Baikal. And in 2024, OFAC was not done. They dropped even more aggressive sanctions that include pretty much anything to do with IT in Russia. As a result, the following activities are prohibited, except to the extent provided by law or unless licensed or otherwise authorized by the Office of Foreign Assets Control. The exportation, re-exportation, sale or supply directly or indirectly from the United States or by a United States person wherever located of IT consultancy and design services or of IT supported services or cloud-based services for covered software to any person located in Russia Federation. That was in the middle of June 2024, and I'm starting to see what's happening here. As you can imagine, the Linux kernel mailing list got a little heated for the next day, but finally, someone stepped in, the hero of the story, Mr. Bottomley, James Bottomley. If your company is on the US OFAC SDN list, subject to an OFAC sanctions program or owned controlled by a company on the list, our ability to collaborate with you will be subject to restrictions and you cannot be in the maintainer's file. I just have one question. Why didn't you lead with that? Like how much could we just avoid with the simple leading of that exact statement? Because if anyone protests, you could just point to good old Uncle Sam and Americans explain to them that we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility, will be listening to the United States Treasury Department and OFAC's SDN list. And if anyone complains, you can cut them off with an eagle and a Miller High Life and a shotgun, America. Oh, but we're not actually done here. It turns out that message also contained a nice little cherry bomb on top of the Sunday. We are hoping that this action alone will be sufficient to satisfy the U.S. Treasury Department in charge of sanctions, and we won't also have to remove any existing patches. Ugh! Removing patches? Oh my gosh. Hey, fun fact. Did you know that Linus created Git in five days? Okay, eat your heart out, Brendan and I, creating JavaScript in 10 days. Well, guess what? Linus did it in five.
And did you know that those five days started on April 3rd, 2005, which is approximately one year after Mean Girls released, which was 20 years ago. And I believe that makes me old. Removing all the patches from all the maintainers that were removed would be quite the undertaking. This one contributor had 518 signed off patches, 253 reviewed patches. Does that mean you have to also remove those? And 80 tested patches. Again, do you have to remove those? The thing about Git is that you can't just remove a patch. You have to revert it or else you just screw up everybody's history. Now, the amount of conflicts that will probably happen if they had to remove all the patches from all the people would be something equivalent of Dante's Inferno Ring 5 of Hell. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye. Press subscribe. Press like.